in the studio with me is Simon Coates. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Why? What do you do? Right. Well, um, essentially, the um, I suppose the purpose of coming here today is to essentially talk to you about uh, myself because I'm actually a science fiction writer, amongst other things. And um, I suppose what I'll do is I'll introduce myself uh, in a general way and then talk about the books. And it links into two huge events coming to Stockton and the nearby area, which we'll, we'll come to. Brilliant. Uh, yes, it's two major, major events. Uh, essentially, um, the uh, one, one of my things that I have as a hobby is science fiction writing. And in the last year, it sort of turned into something a bit more serious when I decided to get published, books published, and um, started to like sort of take it a bit more seriously. And um, as a result of that, I'm doing lots of different events, and I've gotten books for sale in various bookshops. But the, um, the, the, uh, what I'll do is I'll just explain uh, a bit about the, the writing I do, how I came about to write. And then yep. there's a particular book which links into these two big events. And I bet people are wondering, big events in Stockton? What, what's going on in Stockton? We always have oh, big yes. events in Stockton. Right. Well, what it is, uh, about a number of years ago, I got this, I won't go into too much data because I could go on for hours and end. And, you know, <laughs> We've got half an hour. About half an hour, that's fine. Um, well, I had this idea of, of writing um, uh, sort of science fiction, futuristic type things. Now, of course, that's been done many, many times before. Things like Terminator and Mad Max and Star Trek, all great fun. But I thought it would be interesting to sort of look at things that could actually happen uh, realistically. You know, so I thought, okay, well, what sort of things we might be doing in the future? And I thought I had to think of a, a time scale. And I thought, well, how about the twenty fourth century? You know, um, it's not too far in the future. It's reasonably close to think about things. If I took, say, the year uh, thirty five hundred, it would be far too far ahead in the future. It would be almost impossible to imagine the sort of things that be around yeah, here. Yeah. So I had, a, I had a think, and I thought, okay, how many, how many people will be living? What sort of things you might be doing as sport, like activities or jobs and that sort of thing? And once I'd figured out the basics, I could then start writing stories. And now we lead into one of the stories I've written. I've written a few, but I'll, I'll focus on one called Bike Racing into the Red. And this takes a concept, um, as all my stories do, they take a very general concept. And the concept is that we live on planet Mars in the future, right? Okay. It's entirely possible. I know at the moment scientists are looking at sending a man to Mars. We sent a man to the moon That's right, 40 yeah, years yeah. ago. So I thought, well, let's imagine that we live on Mars and that we have jobs and radio stations. Yeah, even. why not? Um, and I thought, well, we, we do normal day-to-day -day activities. And there's a thing on Mars... Well, I call it a thing. It's a rather big thing on Mars, which is rather um, an interesting geographical feature called Olympus Mons. Have you heard of that? Um, can't say I have. No. Right. Well, no doubt you're now going to go on Google when we finish. Have well, a look. I, I will do. Yes. <laughs> well, Olympus Mons is the highest mountain that scientists know of anywhere in the universe. It's a mountain that formed on Mars as a volcano. And it formed uh, millions of years ago uh, when it was spouting lava and stuff. And anyway, it's, it's turned into this huge mountain. And it's 15 miles high, so it's three times higher than Mount Everest. The land mass is about the size of the country of France. So it's absolutely huge. And I thought, well, if we lived on Mars, we'd probably want to get to the top. People do these things, don't they? You do. Know. They climb Mount Everest and we've got Rosby Topping. People climb to top Rosby Topping. It's, it's, Just for fun, apparently, yeah. yeah. It, is, it is fun. <laughs> well, in a strange way, but, you know. Yeah, and okay. And I thought, well, yeah, how about, how about you know, things to get at the top? And I thought, well, again, if, if we lived there and, and this thing's there, scientists would have would have observed it and they would have re-researched in this. There would be almost certainly a road leading to the top. Yeah? Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, you could therefore you could ride a bike up it. And I thought, how about a hill climb up Olympus Mons? Now this links into another one of my hobbies, which is cycling. Yeah. As you can see, I've actually come on the bike today, which you is have, yeah. very authentic. Yes. Uh, I do a lot of racing, and um, in 2013, I did the National Hill Climb Championship. Basically, it's quite simple. You start at the bottom of the hill, you go to the top, and the fastest rider at the top wins. Quite simple. Yeah, yeah. simple. Thing. Um, yeah. And our club has hill climb uh, up Claybank. Do you know Claybank near Great Broughton? 
Oh, yeah. 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 And there's also one up Carlton Bank, which is a really nasty that, hill. That's even bigger. That's yeah. horrendous, that <laughs> one. And so it's anyway, you know, up in a car, yeah. let alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, so I thought, well, um, basically, yeah. So um, there was a national championship in 2013, which is like, basically, we have these hill climbs, and there's one which is designated as, as the, the national championship. And this was called, the, the hill was used uh, called the Stang, which is near Banner Castle. Not many people know about it. You're looking with a blank expression there. Um, it, it's it, 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 I've said into Yorkshire. I yeah, start, it's, I start getting a bit lost. You know? Yeah, it's it's quite. I mean, you know, it, it's not very well known, but it's basically a big hill um, in the Yorkshire Dales, and I rode it. And then I just got the idea, as I say, we're linking it with my science fiction writing. And I thought, how about a hill climb for Olympus Mons? I thought that would be a terrific story. So, so I wrote this story. Um, it was a lot of fun to write because. For me, as a cyclist, the, the challenge was to try and convey what it feels like to ride, race a bike. You know, what's it, what does it really feel like? You know, people know that cycling or any sport is like done at a high level is very hard. But what does that really mean? And I tried to put it into words, and it came across quite well. Um, the, the story itself, basically, it's, I suppose you could think the main character is basically me in the future. He comes from Middlesbrough, and he's an amateur cyclist, and... Um, actually, the story starts on Claybank. I thought our club still do a hill climb up Claybank in the 24th century. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the story starts there, and um, was, uh, he finds out about this hill climb for Olympus Mons. And w when you're a sports person, certain events appeal. There's no real reason why you do these things. You just think, oh, I like to do that. It's a big challenge, you know? Yeah. And a bit like people going up Mount Everest. You know, it's, it is a big challenge. And... Um, and I th as I say, um, I thought it'd be a nice story to write. The the wonderful thing about the story, which I was really pleased about, is that um, I got the foreword um, produced by Paul Curran, who is, um, if people listen to the radio and if they're local to Stockton, they might recognise the name. He's actually somebody who was born in Stockton, and in the 1980s, it was, he was a world-class bike racer. He won two gold medals in the 1986 Commonwealth Games, he actually won the National Hill Climate Championship in 1987, which went up Rosedale Chimney. Do you know what Rosedale Chimney? You've lost me again. Man. Well, it's, it's basically the steepest hill in the Britain. It's right. a ridiculously steep hill. And he won the National Championship. He beat Chris Boardman before he became an Olympic champion. Okay. And, but Paul was a fantastic rider. And, um, and as I say, we, we sort of did the forward together. And, um, and it just sort of completed the story. So that's essentially it. And um, and now I'm going to tell you about the two big events in Stockton, which I'm really excited about as a, an amateur cyclist. That um, I think a lot of people probably already know this, but Stockton is hosting the National Road Race Championships this year. Um, I can't remember. I think it's June time. I think is it May or June? You're going to check that. I'll, yeah. I'll check that. Yep. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm wittering on. Um, and basically. Um, it's part of the Stockton Cycling Festival, which is a really good event, even if you're not really into cycling, because there's all sorts of activities planned. The, um, you know the, the, the main road, sort of next to the River Tees, which is like a sort of a dual carriage. Riverside, Riverside Road. Yeah, that one is closed, and there's yeah. all sorts of uh, fun activities going on. And, of course, there's this big national championship. There's the time trial, I think, on the Thursday and then the um, Thursday, the twenty third to the Sunday, the twenty sixth of June. Yeah. So uh, those are the national championships, and the winner of the road race will get like a special jersey, which he can wear um, if he gets selected for the Tour de France. They'll wear this special British jersey. Yeah. And then the time trial is like the is like the second race, um, and that's I think on the Sunday that one. No, sorry, the time trial is on Thursday, and the road race is Sunday. So it'll be a fantastic race um, to go and watch it. Um, and the second um, major event is, although it's not coming to Stockton, it's sort of in the Teeth area, is the Tour de Yorkshire. And the stage I'm really interested in is stage three, which is the final stage on uh, Sunday, the 1st of May, which is from Middlesbrough to Scarborough. And it's it's a proper big multi, -st multi sort of stage professional road race. So that is going to be an absolutely amazing race. And um, obviously, with doing the cycling story, I'm looking to um, obviously get out there and sort of promote it. Yeah, uh, I've already I've already been offered a place in the central library in Millsboro to like sort of have a table. So hopefully, I'll, I'll be there and 
you know, the books will be there and you can have a, have a chat about cycling if you want. That's yeah, certainly, why not? You know, that's something I like to do. But, um, yeah, so it's going to be really good. Um, and I think that's... Um, uh, that's essentially the basics. Um, I've actually written other stories as well. Uh, there's one uh, which is a, a love story called The Discovery of Love. And before I start rolling your eyes thinking, <laughs> oh, hey. here we go, it's actually, um, again, it's set in the future. And um, it, it's, it's it's a bit of a, quite a, what I call a hard-edged sort of story. Um, there's, no, there's no sort of sex in it, like, you know, uh, like Fifty Years of Grace, nothing like that. It's, it's, a, it's just a love story. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, um, yeah, I won't go into it, it's, it's difficult to explain it really, but it takes another concept in the future, and that one is purely based essentially on, the, on this area. And um, I've got, actually done a few little uh, fun things to do with my writing. If you go to my website, which is uh, www.galactic-echo.com, um, the, the name, by the way, um, came about when I was actually st- when I started writing. It, it was just a bit of fun at that time, because it was like a newspaper style thing. And um, what I did is I had the idea of because um, I was thinking, what what should I call it? And I thought, well, if it's tales from the twenty fourth century, I thought, how about like the Northern Echo or an Echo type newspaper in the future? Right. So I thought, well, Galactic, oh, there you go. So um, if you go on the website, you'll see lots of things. I've done like um, different freebies as well, like with the the love story. There's a little map you can download, and it's a map of Teesside in North Yorkshire in the twenty fourth century. And I thought it was a little fun thing to do. Like for example, um, there's a scene in the book where the two main characters go to Stokesley and they feed the ducks on the River Leaven. I thought, yeah, why, why don't we... We still feed the ducks in the 24th century on the River Leaven, which I think is quite nice. And then um, with the cycling story, I've got... Um, what I've produced as well is like a sort of an event preview. Again, it's another idea I've got where when, when you enter a bike race, uh, you always get the start details. So it's things like where the car should park and where you can warm up and the headquarter building. So we still have cars in the 24th century. Yeah, yeah. yeah why not? Yeah, yeah, I thought, why not? Uh, um, so they don't fly like they did in the Jetsons. Yeah, well, uh, that's another thing, you see. Um, with, with the future, again, because we live on Mars and the Earth and the Moon and there's other like, space stations as well, I thought for that to be realistically possible, we'd have to have a spacious system like a transport system, like we have cars, you know? They would have to be relatively affordable. So we have effectively, although they're not really flying cars as such, they, we do have spaceships which the public can own. Which I think is quite a nice little idea. Yeah, which right. leads in to my other books, which are to do with spaceship racing. Again, um, we, we're now going away from the, the bike racing idea onto my other books. Is this um, the uh, Diary of Silas Volantia? Yes. And um, what that is, it's again another... Another quirky idea I had, I thought, well, um, again, trying to keep it sort of, trying to keep it feel as if it's realistic. I thought, well, again, if, if we lived on Mars, and this is how I always get the ideas of my concepts of stories, I take the basic ideas of things in the future. So, for example, with the spaceship book, it's like, okay, so if we lived on Mars and the Earth and the Moon, we'd have to have spaceships which were relatively affordable. Like we buy cars today. I mean, if cars were like three million pounds each, and some are, of course, but if the average car was three million pounds each, well, nobody would have one, or a very small number of people would have them. So I thought, well, for it to be realistic and for people to be able to tra- tra- travel from Mars to Earth, it would have to be affordable. So I thought, well, if we've managed to make spaceship travel affordable, we've got an entire mode of transport. I thought. We'd go racing, wouldn't we? A motorsport. It was bound to be. So, yeah, absolutely. I thought of a racing formula. I called it Formula X, which is like Formula Extreme. And it's basically Formula One with spaceships. And the Diary of Silas of Valenti, what that actually is, it's the diary of um, a Formula X racing pilot who races in the 2299 Formula X Galactic Championship. And it covers a year in the life of a, a racing pilot so it's basically things like um he talks about meetings with engineers uh, getting the spaceship ready the engine tune-ups and all these sort of things and of course a very detailed description of all the races he takes part in as he tries to win the galactic championship so there you go mm. uh, on the website i've actually produced um uh, i've actually well i've actually made a model it's a one in 20 scale model of uh, a racing spaceship 
and um, on the website it's got all the details of how how things work because what, what I did um, what I wanted to do with as I say with trying to keep it realistic feeling I thought I wanted to make it so that spaceships would actually work so you'll notice the design if you look on the pictures I've got an engine and a, thr a thruster system and the side turbines are critical they're the ones that allow it to turn so you can imagine if they're twisting like sort of left and right and up and down, that the ship would actually move up and down and turn left and right. So I thought that would work well. So that's what I've done. So I've got little pictures on the uh, website, and they've got a heat shield as well. Yes. So I can get into the atmosphere. All these little things, you know. And um, and that model cost, I think, £8 to make because I had to get some spray mounts. All the rest yeah. was like cardboard and paper, and, you know. Brilliant. And, yeah, it was, just, it was just something I did. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so essentially that's, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Um, and as I say, the um, the main book I'm obviously looking at at the moment, with in respect of the um, the bike races, of course, is the bike racing story. And of course, but you see, again, I've got um, an event on Sunday in Sunderland, um, the CM Centre. I think it's on the website actually, where it is. Um, it's like a science fiction event, which I go to a lot of these because it's obviously where the people go who might be interested in books. And um, it's like a, it's a science fiction event, and it's on the fourteenth of February. So I thought, well, I'll be pushing my books, the love story, of course, Valentine's Day. Why, you know? Well, why not? Yeah, I think I'll do absolutely. some sort of special offer on it. You know, um, so yes, and um, so that that is in a sense a nutshell. Um, you're probably going to ask now, what are you working on next? Well, I was going to first of yeah. all say oh, okay. if, if people wanted to buy the books, yeah. How can they get hold of them? Yeah, uh, so the books, um, I have them as e-book uh, versions, which are available on Amazon. Um, there's also um, a site called Smashwords as well. Uh, the links are all on the website, actually. Um, there's actually... So, so the easiest place to go is to go to galactic-echo.com yeah. and everything, all the links and everything yes. that we'll be able to get the, um, Yeah, the, the paperbacks are actually selling direct from the website. Because uh, Amazon, it's a little bit funny with paperbacks, so they're best bought from me. Um, I can start to send them off, but the links are all on there. As I say, I've got the ebook versions. Um, and that was actually something I did when, when I started doing this a bit more seriously. Um, the, the, the actual cycling story was the first one I published properly. And it was actually a spaceship book, so, well. And, but the, the cycling one was the, the first major one, and I had it only as an ebook. And what was interesting is um, I published it just before the Tour de France came over here. Remember it came yeah, yeah, it, yeah. in 2014? Yeah. And I finished the book with about a week to go, and it was only an e-book. And so I went round to the uh, – I went to Leyburn, I think, on the, uh, the first day, and the second day I went to York, and I told people about this book. And it was quite a bit of interest, but I found, I thought, people, people prefer paperbacks. So – I looked into getting paperbacks produced. And, yeah, I think um, particularly when you go into events like that, is that people want physical things. Yes. It's no point yeah. in just say, go to the internet yeah. and go and get it. Mm. You know, if people had it there, they're more likely to buy it. Yeah. If they go away from you, forget about it. Yeah, it's it's the best as well. Like, um, it's a physical item, and it looks because um, I've had um, a local publishing firm print them. It, they've done a very very good job. Um, if people, you know, the um, now do you get now and then magazine up here. Yes. I do, right. Because actually the the publisher of that magazine is called Coin Limited. And they're based in the Transport Bridge in Millsborough and they've done a fantastic job with my books. So, I mean, I'm not advertising them. No, yeah. They actually are very good because if yes. they weren't, I wouldn't be using them. But they've done a very, very good job. And um, uh, Bob, who sort of runs it, he's very professional. And, and I think having that product, because it looks really good, it's, yeah, it does help it makes you look a bit more serious if you like rather than just someone who's just written a book and yeah. it's only an ebook it just it just adds something well, else particularly if you go to the library you know yeah uh, yes you, to have an event in the library a, yeah yeah there's an ebook yeah you know, I, I want a physical book yes Thank it's, you. Better, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing actually because when when they came out um this is way before i was writing about about 10 years ago when they sort of started people thought that uh, ebooks would take over but they haven't People have gone back to their head back now, which is quite interesting, really. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so going back to the original question, then, so what are you working Yes. Yes. Uh, I've actually, in fact, I just started last night. Right. Um, I'm actually writing a story, and it's going to be a bit more um, really hard-edged, this one. It's going to be a lot of, um, should we say, violence in it. 
Yes, there's going to be a lot violence of violence in the twenty fourth so century. Violence, but it'll be yeah, quite a bit more, a bit more of a traditional sci fi, if you like, romp. It'll be still obviously set in that time and all my ideas, but it's a bit. It goes down a darker edge because I thought the, the basic idea is, I mean. Obviously, it's still very early stages yet, but I thought, well, if we've colonialised Mars, only parts of it will be habitable. Other parts, I mean, the whole area, you could live any, you know, the planet would be safe everywhere, but I thought, well, you've got the population areas, and I thought, well, outside the population areas, it could be a bit like the Wild West in America, and sort of yeah? 200 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, that would be um, good to do something. So there's an area, I thought, that would be cool, and uh, I've got a few good ideas of a, a story there, so it'll be... Um, I wouldn't say violent, but more sort of a bit more of an edgy story, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so, 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 so like, like you say, a bit like yeah. the Wild West. You see, you've got sections of, of of America where really you don't need to go through. Yeah. Uh, yes. But like sections of of most towns and cities well, around yes, the UK, <laughs> I wouldn't walk through yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, I'll just mention as well that uh, there was actually a fifth book because there's two books to do with space racing. Um, if you look on the website, basically, um, just to summarise everything, I've got the um, the Diary of Science Fantasy, and then there's the Formula X guidebook, and essentially that's a preview to the racing season, you know? Um, then there's the Discovery Love and Bike Racing Event, which are more traditional stories. There's a fifth book called the Encyclopedia of the Galactic Echo, and that is essentially the whole idea, all the concepts in one book, and that one... The way Amazon, <laughs> they're a bit funny, because I'd like to offer that book for free, and Amazon don't allow it. All right. They, they do sort of allow it, but it's a bit complicated. So what it, what it is, there's a site called Smashwords, and again, you get the link off my website. Okay. Um, it's another e-book site that not many people know about, but they, are, they allow books to be permanently free. So you can download it from Smashwords, and it tells you all the basic stuff about all the things going on in the... 24th century, how, for example, how we came to colonialise planet Mars and this sort of thing. Yeah. It, the first, ma first man on Mars was a person called Sergei Abramov in 20, was that 2037, that's right. I know these things, you know. <laughs> so 2037, Obviously, the first man yeah. lands on Mars. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, so. Well, we'll yeah. wait for 2037, that's, that's yeah. very close. We're right in there, yes. <laughs> and we'll see if we'll you're see right. Comes, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll see if Barack Obama wants to go ahead with this. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, so the, the encyclopedia is free, and it's, um, it tells you all about things you want. And what I did as well, because um, when you do something like this, the ideas just come straight out, and it leads one thing leads to another. Obviously, there's loads of companies involved, and obviously, I couldn't use real companies. No. Because that would take a long time to organise, writing yeah. letters. So I thought, well, I'll just make up loads of companies. So it's things like, um, like with Spaceship Racing, for example, like in Formula One, there's lots of companies that sponsor the team. Absolutely. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to do the same with Formula X. So we've got spaceship manufacturers and logistics companies and transport companies and the official timekeepers. Is it um, Tag Heuer, I think, sponsor Formula One? So I've got a watchmaker in the future that sponsor the Formula X races, all this sort of thing. And yeah, so it make it as realistic as yeah. possible. Yeah. And it's, it's just, as you can probably tell, it's just a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, you know? I can see that you're <laughs> really, really passionate <laughs> it's, about yeah, it's it. Just, it's, you know, just, it's, you know. it's just a pity that none of us will be here to actually see the 2299. Well, <laughs> um, um, unless something drastically happens... Yeah. Um, that we can actually still be here in 2299 to see if all yeah. this actually works. I think as well, um, some of the ideas I've got, I thought, yeah, that that would be good. You get, you get loads of ideas. Like, for example, right? Um, remember the Tamagotchi? Yes. Yeah. I call it a virtual pet. And I thought, well, in the future, we may have robotic pets. Now, we've already got something like that. But mm -hmm. I thought, well, well, let's imagine, right, that the technology is such where... Um, where robots are extremely lifelike. Imagine having a pet that's very lifelike. Because, you know, have you got pets yourself? I, I haven't, no. But, right. uh, well, you know, you know, puppies are dead cute, aren't they? They're really cute. Apparently so. Yes, they are. Yeah. We're, we're, we're <laughs> and, talking to dog lovers. Yeah, yes, they're, they're, really, they're really cute. cute. And they grow up into, to, you know, proper dogs. Yeah. I thought, well, let's imagine if they stayed being puppies. So eventually I thought, well, how about a robot? Like, it's like an exoskeleton and... But it looks like a, a Labrador puppy. And it stays like that. It's a robot. So it doesn't, there's no mess. 
That's a positive. Do I have to take it out? That's even another positive. You know, and I thought if it had like all like um, little motors inside, it would look like a proper puppy, but it would it would only have the, the good things. There'd be no mess, you see. And I thought things like that. So, for example, I've created a company that makes robotic pets and there's advertisement on the in the encyclopedia with a little description of robotic pets and, and there's absolutely tons of stuff in there because once I started getting the ideas, it just... It just, it just flows. Like, as I say, like the, the man mission to Mars, how it came about and how it happened and then how we came to make Mars a safe place to live because I know, for example, um, scientists are looking at... Terra, it's called terraforming to make the planet safe. Basically, at the moment, Mars, you couldn't live on it. So you'd have to make the atmosphere safe and... Uh, a little bit of research of how that would happen. They'd have to make like a sort of a greenhouse effect to make it warmer because it's it's quite a cold planet. It's far, it's far away from the sun than Earth is, so it would be quite a cold planet. And it, and then it's things like how how we come about overcoming the problems to make it habitable. And so the encyclopedia has all these ideas, whether they'd be technically feasible or not. Well, you know, <laughs> I welcome your comments. Send me an email. See what you think. You know, absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what writing is all about, isn't it? Yeah. You never know. Yeah. You know what you're writing about could actually be somewhere yeah. close to the truth. Yeah. Um. You know. It's... Well, that's it. It's like, um, as I say, like I mentioned, Star Trek. The idea of a spaceship going faster than the speed of light. It's it's a very unusual idea, but it doesn't matter if it if it's technically possible or not. It's it's the fact that it's the idea, and it's like it's good fun. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't actually work. You know? but that's um, the thing. Is yeah. that at the moment, it might like, be technically possible, mm. but who knows in the future? Things change dramatically. Yeah. You know, and who knows? You know, yeah. Like you say, 100 years ago, you, know, you couldn't have probably imagined half of the things that we've got today. Yeah. You know, and that's just 100 years ago. We're talking now you know, another couple of hundred yeah. years in the future. And then conversely, I've got uh, people who might not like technical advances you know people i mean you've got a computer here everyone's got computers and then people might not like that so i've actually created an organization called ultra natural and they live in the 24th century but they live very very almost medieval lives and i thought that'd be interesting that like a group like that who would just farm the land in, in the very old-fashioned way i thought well why not so it's another idea but you know? yeah but like you're saying that that again is real life is that we yeah. have you know a generation that are living today you know, possibly back in sort of, and they were brought up 1920s, 1930s, yeah. you know, so... And yeah, so the uh, Hamish community in America are like that, aren't they? Yeah. Um, which is almost very, very old-fashioned, but that's how they live, and, that's, that's, you know... That's right, so it, it is real life, so what you're yeah. writing about, you know, even if you are talking, you know, in 2299, you're always going to get that amount of people that are living... You know, yeah. 80, 90 years or so previous yeah. to that. And then also as well, um, it's things like um, I've thought of ideas that we live on space stations as well, like orbiting the Earth and the Moon and Mars. And I thought, okay, people might like that. It might be quite good fun. But then you think, well, um, there might be a stress-related illness called space deprivation where you're living in a closed area, very small. Because it has to be small, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I thought, that's an interesting one. So there's loads of different concepts in there. And as I said, the, so, yeah, as I said the, the encyclopedia is essentially the, 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 the foundations of all the stories that I'm writing. And it probably will change the encyclopedia because as I develop ideas, you know. Um, so it's just basically keeping an eye on your site, galactic-echo.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, keep on in touch of what's happening in 2299 and beyond, yes. basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it sounds, sounds absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you've got appearances, uh, what did you say? In... Yeah, so there's an event in uh, Sun. like, no, it's not Sunderland, it's, it's near Sunderland, uh, Seaham. Uh, it's, on, it's on the way to Sunderland. Uh, it's like a science fiction event. It's called uh, sci -fair. Like, and There's a link on the website. If you go to the events section, um, there's... Um, yeah, it's called uh, the sci -fair event, and um, I, th I think it's free to get in. Uh, is it free to get in? Um, it does say on your site, it says unique in having free entry. Yep, yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good fun. I mean, the thing is with these events, um, for me, it's, it's great because obviously these are where my potential customers will go because, you know, it's science fiction. Yep. Um, I'd never be one to dress up as Darth Vader, <laughs> but people do, and it's great fun, you know. Um, so it's amazing uh, costumes and people put some tremendous effort into these things. So, yeah, so I'm doing the 
cypher um and of course there's the the big bike races I've, I've been speaking to people about that i'm not entirely sure where how how things will develop with that but i'll be you know um i will be in millsborough for the start of the of the stage three of the tour de yorkshire and then after that we'll we'll, we'll see um and there's a few other events as well um and i'm always doing like book signings and i'm hoping to do talks as well for bookshops i mean um it's i think i've just sent a few con like emails to various bookshops and organizations that might want to get involved so yeah there's always things going on and um yeah there's, there's a new bookshop in stockton drake, yeah drake, drake yes bookshop. i've contacted him and hopefully um you know i'll i'll at the moment some books aren't for sale in there but hopefully hopefully we'll get something sorted out and um, I'm not really one to do you know when you think of authors doing book signings yes I don't well I do them I, I did um, there's Gisborough and there's, there's a, a fantastic little bookshop in Saltburn uh, run by a lovely lady called Jenna and it's the smallest bookshop in Europe apparently it's a tiny bookshop and I, I do book signings in these in these shops but I'm, I'm a bit more sort of I like to sort of I hate using business terms, but think outside the box. So yes, book signings are great, but I like to do more sort of um, things like talks and um, getting a bit more involved. So things like that spaceship model, having that on shore and, and, and then sort of trying to make the stories feel a bit realistic, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and I, w I will mention something else, by the way, related to bike story. It's on there. If you go to, have you got the website? On? I have, yeah. Yeah, if you go to the Goldie section, the yeah. Goldies. Is it on there somewhere? Uh, or Galactic Echo Gold, I can't remember what it's called it. Gal oh, yeah. Galactic yeah, now, Gold, yeah. what that is, again, it's just an idea I had. I thought, well, I've actually, um, what it is, that, that is a necklace um, which uses real bike components, and the key one is a 24 karat gold plated bike chain, which was produced about, it must be about 15 years ago now. Um, basically, a company called Rollhoff make fantastically strong chains. They don't make them anymore, and they produce this special edition 24 karat gold plated version of their chain. And I acquired one. I was very lucky to get hold of one, and I made necklaces out of it. And um, I've actually given those away in little competition competitions I've had. Um, and basically, um, it, it's actually featured in the story. Essentially, in the actual story itself. The main character goes for a bike ride. This is the 24th century. Yeah. He's going to go out for a bike ride, and he puts on this necklace. And he thinks it was a necklace which has been his family for many generations, and he thinks it was won in a competition run by a science fiction author from the 21st century. So I brought myself into the story. And bring it, bring I it. thought that was really... I thought he got this idea. I thought, yeah, I'll do that. And, and it's things like that which I like to do, you know? Um, it's just... It's like a colour, yeah. you know... It's like, I call it a curveball. Yeah. That's another business term. It's like something where you think, oh, I'll just do that, you know? And uh, so I'm actually in the story, which I thought was quite nice. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it um, all sounds absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's, it's brilliant that you can, you can do this sort of thing. Yeah. yeah it's absolutely excellent. It all sounds fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so good luck with the book. Um, think, yeah. Good luck with everything else that you're doing, your cycling and yeah. all sorts of things. Uh, and I'm sure we can do stuff yeah. with you in the future. Excellent. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you.